This is not going to be another how-to video. This is what I found to be the foundation for any boat's lithium-ion setup. Lithium-ion batteries have reached a point in their maturity where they are as cheap, if not cheaper, than the old lead-acid or AGM batteries. However, you need to make a one-time investment in your boat's electrical system to safely move to the new technology. When it comes to lithium on boats, you will find that there are a lot of opinions about what's required to do this upgrade successfully. I'm here to filter through the fluff and sort the wants from the needs. This is not going to be another how-to video showing you how to wire all these components into your boat, because ultimately what I need for my boat is not going to be the same as what you need for yours. Maybe think more of this video as like a what to or a why to. I'm no electrical engineer and electronics have never been my cup of tea. Oh, Ugh. gross, butt splices, ah. If you go online and Google how to install lithium, you might find some wiring diagrams from manufacturers that look like these. And let me tell you, these are spaghetti. This might actually be a very good system, but these Linguinian clams are full of tons of extras and add-ons that you might not need for your boat. So I have spent years researching, watching other people install their lithium systems, reading all of the technical manuals, and talking to people who do this professionally. And what I've come up with is the foundational system for a practical boat installation. This setup can be expanded or accessorized however you want it to be without spending a ton of money on technology you'll never use. And here it is. This is what I found to be the foundation for any boat's lithium ion setup. Now, you might be wondering why do we need any of this anyway? Well, this lithium ion battery is capable of delivering way more amperage than any lead acid battery ever could. Because of that danger of high amperage, all of your boat's wiring is at risk. These components here are to mitigate and prevent any unintended electrical fires because of the lithium system. Let's start by talking about lithium ion batteries. We're now at a point with this technology where this one 27 pound battery can replace all three of these 50 pound lead acid batteries and deliver the same amount of power at roughly the same cost. I will not miss these. <sighs> If you get a normal battery, you might need to also get a BMS or a battery management system. The one that I bought has an integrated BMS so that I don't need to get a separate piece over there. Once you have your battery selected, you're also going to need to get a terminal fuse such as this one. This terminal fuse is going to be the last line of defense against any issues going on here. There's no chance that any of the wires are going to draw more than this fuse is rated for. Speaking of fuses, fuses are going to be your friend in any lithium ion setup. They are there to protect the wiring. When you're wiring your system together, every circuit either needs to be on a fuse or a breaker or both. There's a bunch of different fuses and breakers on the market and the fuse size and type will be determined by the power required for each circuit. The most important thing to remember is that you want your fuses to blow before the wire reaches its rated limits. If it doesn't, that wire can get hot and can start an electrical fire. Now when it comes to bus bars, the idea of a distribution bus bar like this is that you can put fuses on the individual loads wherever the electricity is going to be going. This also allows you to connect any of your direct current devices together in a way that's safe and prevents you from having a bunch of wires attached directly to the battery. There's a lot of different brands and a lot of different options. I like this one because it fits with some of the other accessories that I've bought that are not here on the table. Now you might notice that I only have a charger in my setup here. If you look online, almost everyone recommends an inverter charger. That's baloney. An inverter charger is only going to make sense if you're planning on running heavy duty appliances off of your lithium battery system. If you're like me and you're not planning on bringing any big appliances with you on your cruising adventure, then a normal lithium rated charger will do. If you are, however, planning on running something big, like a large refrigerator or air conditioning, then it would make sense to switch this charger out for that inverter charger. Now, the way that I've designed my system is that the starter battery and engine alternator don't change. Those are going to be the same as they have always been. What does change, however, is instead of having the house bank directly connected to the starter bank in a rudimentary way, we now have this DC to DC charger in the middle. 
When the engine is running, this is going to send electricity to the starter battery. This DC to DC charger allows electricity to flow back into the house bank and top off your lithium batteries. Your lithium battery is like a hungry, hungry hippo. Your alternator is almost always going to be rated for a lower amperage than the limit for the lithium battery. The DC to DC charger plays a vital role in regulating the amount of current your lithium can draw off the alternator. Not having that regulator will cause your alternator to overheat, causing damage to itself and possibly even starting another fire. Now there's a ton of different brands and options for this, so go find one that works for what you needed to. Now when I say DC loads, I'm talking about your electrical switches. That'll be your lights, your refrigerator, any navigational equipment you might need, your water pump, whatever you can think of, that'll be your DC load. You need to make sure that you have a switch that is rated for the maximum current that you're planning on drawing through that DC load. That switch can either be a smart switch like this or a manual switch like this one. I highly recommend always having a manual switch even if you have a smart switch. That way you have that ultimate protection in case something fails here you can always flip it off. Now let's say you do want to go and expand this. Well you can always put these distribution bars in parallel with each other. The Victron brand I like because you can bolt more of these next to each other and basically copy and paste them on. Same with the batteries. You can always put more batteries in parallel as long as you get adequate cabling for it. If you want to add solar or wind charging, you can include that over here with your charger and plug that in directly to your bus bar as long as you have all the required accessories for that solar or wind charger. You can also add what's called a shunt over here. It's a fancy device that allows you to measure current and voltage as it goes through the entire system. There's other smart technology that you can plug into a lot of this stuff such as a control panel that can turn this on and off or shut off the smart switch or even turn off individual circuits. But that is getting beyond the foundation that we've laid out here on the table. I think it's really important to also mention that lithium is not always going to be the number one battery technology on the market. There's sodium and solid state batteries that are starting to pop up in some places on the internet. And when those become more mainstream and more mature like lithium, this foundation will be compatible with those future technologies. But we might have to wait a few more years for that video to come out. Let us know what you think. Are you also overwhelmed with all the different options? Do you need help with your lithium setup? Feel free to drop a comment down below or reach out to us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to help you with your lithium installation. We're doing the initial charge up right now. everything's going well. All right, so this is kind of a behind the scenes. If you guys want to see how I actually installed this, I've got the Renogy 100 amp hour battery here. It's currently being charged by my old Pronautic 1240P. That's the charger I've had for a very long time, and I might have to upgrade it in the near future, but for now it's still working. For accessories, I ended up getting the Lynx shunt which connects to the Servo GX and I've run a cable to go to a touch screen out there and that'll be the monitoring system for this setup. I have a smart battery protect, the Orion uh, 50 amp DC to DC charger and then I've cleaned up a lot of the cabling and whatnot in the engine space just to help accommodate all of this. Um, my engine start bank is still over here and it is still two lead acid batteries. Those are now on a separate circuit from the lithium battery. The only thing that connects it is this red cable which goes to the Orion 50 amp charger. So these two batteries should never be touching anything else on the circuit other than the engine that I'm sitting on. The Victron and Renji battery setup that I have here is going to be what actually powers uh, all the other systems on the boat. I'm very quickly running out of wall space here in the engine room. Um, if I do want to accessorize further with this setup and get a bigger battery, for example, I might have to take my water maker, uh, which I don't really use anyway, out of this space and put it uh, somewhere else on the boat. Or I might just have to get a bigger boat. We're on contract to get this Tatouche or Nassau 42, depending on who you ask. And uh, we'll see what the survey says. What do you think, sweetie? It fits so good. We did this in 
28 hours? 28 hours? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, not 28 hours straight. We started it yesterday and finished it today. Okay.